Hello friends. I'm so glad to see you. I hope you are doing well. While we're making this videotape, it's a dark and rainy night. Are you inside snug and warm, I hope? Well, before we get started with our story for the day, I think we should say a prayer. And I pulled out a prayer that we've used before. It's just one of my favorites. So Tim's going to zoom in on it so that you can follow along. And if you are a reader, you can pray this with me. This is from a book called Anytime Prayers. Sea and sky and birds and fish and trees and flowers and then, O oh Lord, you made lions and lambs, tigers and titmice, cows and sparrows, bears and butterflies. O oh Lord, you made a lot on the sixth day and you weren't finished yet because then you created us, your children, in your own image. You created us. Alleluia. That prayer is written by the wonderful writer Madeline Langle. And we have the book at the church um, that has all of the prayers that she wrote. So we'll hold on to that. We might want to pull that out again later. Here is our coloring page for this week, which is based on the psalm, Psalm 123. And the words say, Have mercy upon us, O God. And remember when we use that word mercy, we're hoping that God or um, someone else who cares about us will show us great love and compassion and and concern for, for whatever it is that we're going through at the moment. So that's the coloring page for you to design any way that makes you happy. And here's the bulletin. And the saying on the front of the bulletin is from another part of the Bible. It's from a book called the First Thessalonians. And this is based on a letter that someone named St. Paul wrote to the people. And I love this phrase. It says, therefore, encourage one another and build up each other. So Paul was trying to make sure that the people encouraged each other as they waited waited through maybe a hard time, something they were hoping would get better. And you can see here, if you open it up and you do the word search, there'll be a lot of words from that story. So if you have a chance to read that story, um, either from a Bible you have at home, or you can look it up on the computer and put in the notation and find just that story and read that. And then you might have some fun doing the word search this week. But I was thinking about this idea about encouraging one another. I thought, boy, this is a time when we all need to encourage each other because we've just been trying so hard to take care of each other in this time of the pandemic. And I don't know what made me think about this. Maybe it was part, part of it was our story last week. Do you remember the story of the young woman who was the scientist? And I got to thinking about just what it is that maybe captures our heart and spurs us on to do something in our life that's like a big adventure, something maybe we wouldn't even imagine we were going to do, but, but um, things just keep unfolding in front of us and we have new opportunities. So it made me think about another very famous scientist, a woman, and I thought, I wonder if all of my friends know the story of this woman. Her name is Dr. Jane Goodall, and I've known about her my whole life because she became kind of world famous 
when I was a very young girl. And now she's a grandmother. She's actually, I don't know if she's a great grandmother, but she's a grandmother. And she's in her mid 80s. And when she started her work that made her famous, she was about 26 years old. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to share a book with you right now. And the book is on our computer and we'll show it to you. It's a book called Me Jane. Have you heard that phrase before? It's kind of based on another story, a story about Tarzan. You might have heard about Tarzan. And Jane lives in the jungle with Tarzan. Well, when this Jane, Jane Goodall, was a very little girl, a young girl, she read the Tarzan stories as she was growing up and she became fascinated, fascinated with the idea of living in Africa. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to watch this movie. And I wanted to say one thing to you, friends. I know some of you are not tiny little children who are watching this. I know some of you are older students, maybe even some grown-ups are watching, and you might think, why does Leslie always show us these children's storybooks? Because we're big enough to understand lots of big complicated things, and I know you are, but I love these storybooks because sometimes I think they are a beautiful way for us to become introduced to an idea or a person and a part of their life we might not know anything about. So here we go. We're going, to, we're going to watch Me, Jane, and we're going to learn a little bit about Dr. Jane Goodall's childhood. And then we'll learn more about her scientific studies and her discoveries. Here we go. Me, Jane. Jane had a stuffed toy chimpanzee named Jubilee. She cherished Jubilee and took him everywhere she went. And Jane loved to be outside. She watched birds making their nests. Spiders spinning their webs. and squirrels chasing one another up and down trees. Jane learned all that she could about the animals and plants she studied in her backyard and read about in books. One day, Curious Jane wondered where eggs came from. So she and Jubilee 
snuck into Grandma Nut's chicken coop? Hid behind some straw? Stayed very still and observed the miracle. It was a magical world, full of joy and wonder, and Jane felt very much a part of it. Jane often climbed her favorite tree, which she named Beech. She would lay her cheek against its trunk and seem to feel the sap flowing beneath the bark. Jane could feel her own heart beating, beating, beating. With the wind in her hair, she read and reread the books about Tarzan of the Apes, in which another girl, also named Jane, lived in the jungles of Africa. Jane dreamed of a life in Africa, too. A life living with and helping all animals. night, Jane would tuck Jubilee into bed, say her prayers, and fall asleep. To awake one day, To her dream come true.
That book, Me Jane, was written and illustrated by Patrick McDonald. He's an artist who also uh, does comic strips, so you may see some of his work sometime. If you see a comic and you think, I've seen that style before, his name is Patrick McDonald. This is one of the most remarkable pictures, this picture of Jane Goodall that is at the end of that little film. What did you think when you heard the sound of the chimpanzee at the end? That was Dr. Goodall making that sound. And that's a greeting that the chimps use to uh, declare themselves, to tell other chimps that they're there and um, to say hello. So, I wanted to tell you some things that I've learned this week with, as I've been learning about Dr. Goodall and thinking about what happened in her life, all the pieces that came together that made it possible for her to have this amazing adventure and this wonderful life of learning. So, I'm going to show you a few things. Now, we know that Jane was dreaming of going to Africa. Um, I've heard her say that when she went to school and um, it was time for her to go to college, her family didn't have enough money for her to go to university, which is what they say in England, and that's where Jane was born. And so she didn't have enough money to go on to more education. So she got a job and she saved her money. She worked very hard and she took a course, uh, went to a, a school to learn how to be a secretary so that she could have a job as a secretary and earn some money so that she could go to Africa. And that finally happened. She made a trip to Africa. This is a map, a uh, very simple map. I just took a picture uh, from the computer. And she actually ended up going to the country right here, which is Kenya, above the green part that I colored in. The green part is where she did her studies of the chimpanzees. But she started off in Kenya, and she met a man named Dr. Lewis Leakey. And he was also from England, but he was working, and his work was to study and try to learn about early humans. And in 1957, he, um, just, he got some money from, um, I think it was the National Geographic, I can't be sure, but he got some money to pay for someone to study the chimpanzees. And he thought if, if someone could study the chimpanzees, maybe they could learn from the chimpanzees what very early human beings might have been like. And so, guess who he chose to do that work? He asked Miss Jane Goodall to do that work, and she, at that time, was working as a secretary for him and his wife and all of their team as they um, dug up and studied the fossils of early human beings. So, the notes here say that he believed that he wanted someone to have an open mind and a love of animals and monumental patience. And monumental is like huge. Well, if you remember from the story, Me Jane, 
Jane, even as a very young girl, had lots and lots of patience. Remember when she was sitting in the hen house and waiting for that chicken to lay an egg? So it was kind of in her nature to be a very patient and watchful person. So here is a picture of Jane impressed by her lifelong passion for animals. Dr. Leakey selected his 26-year-old British secretary, Jane Goodall, for the mission. She had no training or scientific degree, but what she had was a love of animals, and she was very observant, and she was very patient. And she was going off to do something no one else had ever done. A few people had tried to observe the chimps, but they ran out of patience. And when they couldn't get close to them, they just gave up. So her mission was to get close to the chimpanzees, to live among them, and to be accepted. This picture of Jane... Can you see what she has in her hand? She has her notebook where she would write down her observations. And who does she have here? She has a friend. She has one of the chimpanzees who obviously became very comfortable with her and was kind of like, he certainly wasn't a pet, but he was like a, a close friend and would come and maybe go for a walk with her. She was so patient, she would sit for hours and wait and let the chimpanzees get used to her. And she never chased them. She just sat very still. And they became very used to her. And they knew that she was uh, calm and that she wouldn't hurt them. And so they became very um, affectionate and sometimes they would come and give her a big hug. Here's another picture of her carrying a young chimp. And the National Geographic magazine and the people who um, helped to give the money for her work they also um, gave money for um, a wildlife photographer to come out and take pictures of her doing her work. And um, several movies, or we, sometimes we call them documentaries when they're about a real life person and what they did in their life, documentaries about Dr. Goodall. You can find those can even find them right now on the Disney Channel because National Geographic, if you are lucky enough to be able to, to do that, you can watch them that way. I bet you can get some from the library too. Look at this. She became so um, close to the chimps that sometimes they even talked together. Looks like she's learned, she's making that um, chimp sound, the greeting, and even getting a little kiss. Would you like to kiss a chimpanzee? I don't know how I feel about that, but I think that they were such good friends and they were so uh, gentle with her. She never felt afraid when she was with them. So the um, National Geographic sent out a very talented uh, photographer, and his name was Hugo Van Lawick. I think I said that right. He worked for National Geographic, and he went out to take movies while Dr. Goodall was working and sitting in the forest and watching the chimpanzees and making notes in her notebook. And guess what? They fell in love 
and they got married. And then a few years later, they had a little boy. And they, li they were living in Africa. This is their little boy. And look at their little boy's name. Hugo, like his dad, Hugo Eric Lewis Van Lawick. And he was born in 1967. But they didn't call him Hugo Eric Lewis. They called him Grub. That was his nickname. And Grub lived in Africa while he was a very young child. And when he got older, he moved to England to live with his grandmother. And he went to school in England. And then he spent every summer and, and all of his holidays with his mother in Africa. One thing I didn't tell you was that when Jane was very young and she made her first trip to Tanzania to uh, follow the chimps and study them, people were worried about her and her safety and they said, well, if she's going to go on this trip, she needs to have someone go with her just to, to uh, help make sure that she's safe. And she had a team of people who helped her set up the camp where, she, where they lived. And, and she even had someone doing some of the cooking, I think, which was good because she was so busy uh, following the chimps for maybe 12 or 14 hours a day. But the person that went all the way from England to Africa with her was her mother. Her mother who, who always supported her and encouraged her and told her, if you really want to do this, you can do it. But you have to work hard and you have to take advantage of every opportunity that comes along and never give up. And those are words that Dr. Jane shares with other people, especially young people, when she wants to encourage them. I was going to show you one more picture from her research, and this was really big news in the world um, because she was one of the first people who was able to really watch how the chimpanzees lived. She saw them do something remarkable. She saw them use a blade of grass or a stick to um, pull out some termites out of a a little mound of soil and then they ate the bugs they ate the termites but what was remarkable was they were using something as a tool to help them get their food and up until Dr. Jane saw that no one realized that chimpanzees could do that that they were that intelligent so it was a really wonderful thing that um, she had this love of animals, and she has said that she didn't go to Africa um, in the beginning to study the chimpanzees. She went because she loved the animals, all of the animals. And I think whatever Dr. Leakey asked her to do, whichever kind of animal he might have asked her to study, she would have been glad to do that. But the, the animal he really wanted her to study was the chimpanzee. And she was 26 years old when she started, and she's 86 now. And so, can you do the math? How many years is that? Let's count. 26, 36, 46, 56, 66, 76, 86. She has been studying the chimpanzees for 60 years. That's a long time. That's a whole lifetime, isn't it? Here's a picture when her son was a teenager or a young man, and it looks like they're walking in Africa. And here is a much more recent picture taken about three years ago. And there was a kind of a wonderful uh, discovery made. 
and that was that there was lots and lots of film that Jane's husband had taken. Do you remember what he looked like? He was the filmmaker from National Geographic. He had taken lots of movies of her, but they they either got lost or misplaced, and they didn't know where they were. And a few years ago, they found them. A hundred hours worth of film. And they used that film to make a new movie about her. And this movie is just called Jane. And it's on the National Geographic channel on TV. And it tells the story of her life's work and her adventure. She has done lots of wonderful things and she um, at, at some point realized that because she loved and cared about the chimpanzees so much that her work was going to call her to do something new and that was to go out into the world and talk to people about how to take care of our planet Earth so that the habitat, the place where the animals lived, could be preserved and so they would have a chance to have a good life because if all the trees got cut down, where would they live? So she um, stopped doing just the research and she started speaking to um, people all over the world, making speeches, doing lots of important things. And something she did that I thought you would really like to know about is she started a program to empower, to inspire, to help young people make a difference in the world. And her program is called Roots and Shoots. And it says, you have the power to build a better world. What difference do you want to make? Explore to unlock your passion and find ways to get involved today. I took that little, um, that little bit off of the computer. So when it says explore, if you were on her computer um, site, her website, um, there would be something you could just um, click your computer button and it will take you to show you lots of information and this is what she um, she and all the people who work with her what they encourage young people to do get engaged and that doesn't mean that you are going to get married sometimes you might hear that phrase I've gotten engaged no it means that you have gotten um, connected and excited and uh, interested in something that's really, um, really interesting to you and something you want to learn more about. So first, you find that, that thing in the world that's important to you, and then you take time to observe and learn. And then, maybe there's an action that you might take to help make it better. And then at the end, I love this, she says, celebrate. So I want to tell you one quick story about a group of children. And they did just that. It's a class of, I believe they were third graders. They live in the state of Georgia. And they really loved dogs. They loved animals, but they really loved dogs. And they decided they wanted to be a part of the Roots and Shoots program. And what they decided was they would connect up to a local animal shelter. And they would go in and spend time with the dogs who were in the animal shelter. These are dogs that didn't have a home yet, that were hoping, the dogs were hoping that maybe they would be adopted sometime, but they needed, the dogs needed to be around people so they knew how to act around people. 
and the children wanted to help the dogs and the children also wanted to improve their reading. So they would go to the animal shelter and guess what they would do? They would read to the dogs. You might have heard about, about that. Sometimes um, people have done that in other places too. But what is so much fun about this is not only did they read about the dog, read to the dogs, but they decided that um, they cared about what the dogs were eating and how they were going to be taken care of. And they ended up creating and making healthy dog treats for them. And I think then they sold the dog treats and gave the money back to the shelter. Can you see what they named their group? It's on their t-shirts. It's called Positive Kids. And they spell it like a dog's paws. Positive Kids. And they even started to make um, dog toys out of recycling um, t-shirts. I'm not quite sure how they did it, but they just did all kinds of wonderful things. And it's all a part of being inspired and looking at a situation. What can they do? What's important to them? And where they, um, they took what was in their heart which was a love and concern for the dogs, and then what they could do, the gifts they had. Well, I think they had all kinds of gifts. If you see the way they, they organized themselves and they made the commitment to go to the shelter, and the teacher said that they just did wonderful things. I'll bet those dogs, when they got adopted, were really good pets because they had already been shown a lot of love from the children. So when you go onto the computer, if you get interested in learning more about Dr. Jane Goodall, you will see that she even has a program that I thought, wow, this is perfect for us right now because you can do so much learning at home. And she has um, a whole kind of a little schedule here that if you wanted to follow it, you could learn something new every day. And here it even says, watch Jane on Disney or Hulu. So hopefully you, you might be able to do that sometime. It's a great movie to watch with your family. And there are lots of books, even I believe the book that we just saw, Me Jane, is listed in here somewhere. And she has two whole weeks of great activities for you to look at and consider doing. When Jane was a little girl, there, there weren't computers uh, with lots of information the way we have now, but she would go to the library and she would go to a secondhand bookstore and she always said she saved her money. She called it pocket money. We might call it an allowance. She, she would save her money so that she could get books that, that were interesting to her, books about animals. So, there is so much to know about Dr. Jane Goodall. I think it's, a, it's an inspiring story. It's a surprising story. She did something no one had ever done before. Um, and she has said that she... She never felt afraid. When she was there in Africa, she thought, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. That reminds me so much of what we talk about when we say that uh, we're going to use our gifts in the world. You remember last week, taking our deep joy into the world and sharing that. So. I don't think anyone knew when she first went, went to Africa that we would learn so much about how intelligent the chimpanzees were. I don't think she knew she was going to meet her husband in Africa, who, you know, I think all she was thinking about at first was the chimpanzees. But then 
so many wonderful things happened. And she's changed the lives of chimpanzees, of people who care for them, of people who live in Africa, who live near the chimpanzees. And now she works so hard to help spread the word about how we can all take better care of the planet. Let's come back and remember that all of those gifts start from the gifts given to us when God created our beautiful world. When God created sea and sky and birds and fish and trees and flowers and then, O oh Lord, you made lions and lambs, tigers and titmice, cows and sparrows, bears and butterflies. Oh Lord, you made a lot on the sixth day. And you weren't finished yet because then you created us, your children, in your own image. You created us. Alleluia. And maybe we'd want to add, thank you, God, for chimpanzees. Thank you for all the primates, all the wonderful creatures that live in Africa, and all the creatures that live everywhere in the world. Dr. Jane Goodall says one of her best teachers was her pet dog, Rusty. And that having a pet like that, having a dog, really helped her to understand that all animals have their own personalities and their own feelings. And I think it helped build that sense of compassion. To remember over the summer we talked a lot about compassion. She had compassion and empathy for other creatures, for other living things, because of her wonderful pet, Rusty. So. As always, I'm going to say, my friends, I hope you have a wonderful week. And I hope perhaps um, next week we can begin our, our study and our excitement getting ready for the new season of Advent that is soon to, to happen. So until then, take care, let your love shine, let your light shine, and be well. I'll see you very soon. Bye now.